Hello everyone. It's Monday night, surgeon night. It's lovely to see some people come in. So do come in and say where you're from. And actually, would you tell me what machines you have? That would be really useful to me tonight. So if you would just be good enough to tell me what machine you're sewing on and where you come from. So what we're going to be doing tonight is working with a serger and what I'm going to be doing will work on all sergers. So it doesn't matter what make you have. I'm going to be demoing on the Triumph tonight. And I just want to say to those of you that have never come in before, my name's Deb Cannon. I'm a baby lock educator. Um, it, it doesn't matter what surgery you have. I'm sure there'll be some great tips for you on tonight's live. And as I said, I'm going to be working with gathering. I'm going to be working with gathering and puffing and sewing ruffles to a flat piece of fabric. And that's great you tell me what your machines you have. That's really helpful. Glad I asked. Glad I thought to ask that question. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn around and just show you some places where I've used ruffling. Um, I never ruffle on the same machine if I can avoid it because it's so much easier on the serger. So let me turn you around and show, show you a few things I've got and then we'll get on with tonight's demo. So lovely to see you all. So let's turn you around. This is always my challenging bit. Aha. Right. Oh, you didn't get to see Richard. He's there. He's put a board up so you can't see him. Right. So here we have some ruffling. This is on the creative tote. And we just do a little bit of ruffling along this pocket edge. Um, so we're going to be looking at how I did that. And what else do we have? We have um, we have this purse and in my projects, if you look in my store on my website, you'll see lots of patterns for things. And what I try to do is try to include a technique with each project. And this project is, um, it's called the ruffle bag, I think. And, uh, what it is, is it's just a great big piece of ruffling. And actually, if I lift this up, you'll see it's joined in the center. So it's one big panel of ruffled fabric. And that was done on the serger. So that's that. And I'm going to show you this, but I'm kind of misleading you a bit here because I didn't do this on the serger, but I can do the same type of thing on the serger. I, did, I actually did this with cover stitch, but do you see the ruffled panels here? Isn't that pretty? We can do that on the serger. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But a lot of people have, um, have trouble with the serger ruffles. They feel that they don't get enough gathers in it. So we're going to try and work on that. So everybody, if you'd be kind enough to come in, tell me where you come from and what machine you have, that would be awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you over to the machine and we're going to start sewing. Whoops. So look away if you get giddy. Right, let's move you down so you can see the... So let me explain first that the most important thing when you work with ruffles is the type of fabric you're working on. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how it works on fine fabrics and that's all you're going to be able to gather on the serger. It's actually all you can gather on the sewing machine either, but people forget that. So what I'm going to do is just show you just a regular piece of serging and actually let me bring you out so that you can um, perhaps see. I'm going to show you the differential feed. Whenever we're gathering the differential feed in the case of the um, these machines, is it's on the side. Some of you will be a little lever on the side or even maybe a knob. But we're going to push it all the way to the top. Okay, so in the, our case, all the way up to two. And what that's going to do is it's going to gobble up the fabric. These feed dogs at the front are going to pull the fabric in twice as fast as those at the back. And what that does is it creates the, the ruffle, the gather. So I have my regular foot on the machine and I'm going to show you why. Because the first time round, what I'm going to show you is just straightforward gathering. 
all I'm going to do is gather this piece of fabric. Now, I'll just do it and then I can show you what happens next. See, it has gathered up the fabric. And what I did with this piece is, this is a piece that I just want to attach to something and um, I need to use this exact mount. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to un pull out the, the um, needle threads, just the needle threads. It's like two straight rows of stitching, the same as the sewing machine. And I'm just going to pull on the needle threads. And when I pull on the needle threads, it gathers up the fabric exactly how much I want. So some of you say, well, it doesn't gather as much as I like. Well, you could always use this method of just pulling up the threads. Now, what you need to know, and this is essential, is your stitch length needs to be on four. Just the same as on the sewing machine, you would have a large stitch length too. And that helps you to pull up your threads. So there's some times when you just have to use this method if you perhaps made a a circular ruffle and it needs to fit on the end of a jacket, the lower edge of a jacket, and it needs to be the right amount of fabric in there for the uh, jacket, then this is the kind of method you would use. So that is just straightforward gathering. I'd like to say one more thing, but it's not essential to this. And that is tonight I am using stretch thread in my needles. Now, to get stretch thread into the needles, you need one of these six loop needle threaders. It's not going to go in easily because it's a bulky thread. And I'm actually using Maxi Lock Stretch. And there's also this one. This is Soft Lock by Wonderfill. And you can see it's a very fine type woolly nylon. And you do get slightly more stretch when you use that in the needle. So there's a consideration and I'm going to be using it throughout. It wasn't essential on the one I just did because we were pulling up the threads. So that is if you're just working on one piece of fabric. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to puffing. And what is puffing? It's where you gather each side and it gives you a really pretty little um, panel of gathered threads. And quite often you'll see cording running next to puffing. It's just a, a, a common decoration, particularly in the old days where they used to use this and then they'd undo it and let it out to, to help with, you know, somebody grew when they were more sort of careful with the, their clothing back in the old days. And they would just let the puffing panel out and that would allow a bit more room for growth. Here's actually another puffing panel. And I'm just going to show you this side. That's actually on a silk. See how nice it is on a silk. It gathers much more on a silk. It's a question of gathering on a fine fabric. So I'm actually, I've actually got some puffing here on a regular piece of cotton and it's not quite as gathered as I would like. And that's because this is kind of a heavy quilting cotton. Certainly heavier than my K facet um, fabric that I use, which is a little bit finer. So what I want to say now is I'm going to change my foot. I'm going to change to the ruffler foot. Even though I'm not actually attaching a ruffle, I'm going to change to the ruffling foot because I get better gathers using the ruffler foot. And I'm not going to be pulling up this thread particularly. I, I could do, but I'm not going to. So I also want to show you how I um, use my ruffler foot. Now, if you have the smaller um, machines, you won't have this kind of foot so say you have the um, vibrant your foot's a little bit different and you can't use this technique but for those of you that do have this foot let's let's get to understand how it works best so you will see just at the front here do you see there's a little corner here a cut out corner just just there where my allen key is and what i'm going to do is i am going to get my fabric into that corner and I'm going to keep it there. And the way I do that is to lift it. But first of all, I need to get my fabric running into the needles. And that's another point. When you first do a ruffle, of course, it's not going to gather much for the first inch. Okay, so always cut your ruffle longer than you need. 
Okay, so my needles are in there and it's started to gather. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it into that um, little section there. Do you see it? And I'm not holding it tight because that's going to pull against the fabric and stop it from ruffling. But I'm just dropping it in and I'm holding it up and I'm keeping it in that corner. You can have your knife up. It's not going to matter at this point because it's actually not going to reach the knife. Did you see what a nice gather I get? So that's one side and now I'm going to do the other side. So as I said, the first inch, you can forget about the ruffle. It's going to take a while before it kicks in. So just going to get it back to the needles. And then I'm going to hold it up. And I'm not pulling on it. I'm letting it drop into the feed dogs. That's really important. Otherwise, you'll stop the ruffle. So there you have it. Both sides have ruffled nicely. Isn't that pretty? You pull on each side and then that will um, flatten it out. Well, I say flatten it out. Level out the gathers. But isn't that cute? It's a nice technique. I, um, I'm just working on something we can use it more in at the moment. So as I said, it's all about the fabric. I used a fine fabric there. If I'd used a heavier fabric there, I would just have gone to the end here and pulled up on those threads to make it go tighter. And you can certainly do that. I just want to show you gathering on a piece of knit because I often see people saying, oh, I'm trying to ruffle a piece of knit and it won't ruffle. And the fact is it probably won't, okay? It's just too thick. And I'm just gonna run this through so you can see what I mean. It's going to come out pretty much straight. I'm going to hold it into that ruffle. But you're going to see it really tried. And you might get a few pleats in it. This is quite a thick one. But I don't think for anybody that's a really great ruffle. So again, you can try pulling it up. But there's another way of dealing with the heavier fabrics. So let me just um, change my foot. And that way is to sew a cord into the um, stitching so that you can pull it up on the cord. And that's quite a common way of doing gathering even on the sewing machine. Can't quite see the entire foot area, somebody said. I can help you with that. Thank you for pointing it out. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go to my elastic foot because the elastic foot has holes in it where I can thread in some cord. Do you remember sometimes we put wire in there to make a wire edge? This time we're gonna put cord in. And so, let me just cut that in because it's got a bend in it, so it'll challenge me. And you can use any type of cord that will fit through here. I forget what this is. This is some kind of cord I used to make trim for the teddy bear clothing years ago. So I'm threading it into the two holes. Can you see that? There's the two holes. And then if you look at the back here, there is a groove and you're going to put it in that groove and attach it to the machine. It's going to move, of course. So I've got my foot on and I'm gonna pull it back behind the machine. And what you need to understand is you need to get your cord to the right of the needles and actually I'm going to cheat and take my and actually no I'll leave it there because I can't go to fight with it what you need to do is make sure that your stitching your needle isn't catching the cord so I'm just going to do a few stitches once you get it in the right place it will stay there <clears throat> and in actual fact I might normally have done that with a three thread if you take this other needle out it's a little less close to the cord so there's a consideration. And what I'm going to do is put the fabric under. I'm going to cut it this time. And what I'm doing is I'm just stitching over the cord and I'm really hoping it's not catching in the needle. It's close to, I should have taken that third needle out, but I like to live dangerously. So 
So the advantage of that is if it's a thick fabric and it's not going to gather itself, then you can pull on the cord, which I cut a bit short, hold on to it this end and just pull it up. Do you see? And that's how I deal with something like a furnishing cotton or anything that's too heavy to gather. Okay. So can you see that, that it's gathering up on the cord? Right, on to the next one. The next one is my favorite one. It's basically how to deal, how to deal with sewing ruffles onto a strip of fabric. And that is huge in my book. I'm just reading some of your questions. Will the stretch thread melt like woolly nylon? You know, that's always interesting. Um, I've never melt, what, melted woolly nylon, but I'm sure if it can be done, it can be done. Um, if that's a concern for you, just use regular thread. The puffing foot, same on gathering foot. Yes, you can. You, do you mean the shearing foot or the ruffler foot? Can you use gathering for face masks? No, I wouldn't. I would definitely use pleats. Um, that's not to say you can't. I just said I would use um, I would use pleats rather than gathering. Okay, so that was a few questions that got answered, and now I've forgotten where I am. Okay, so yes, this is where I am. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at <clears throat> stitching ruffles onto flat strips of fabric. So back to the ruffler foot, I've still got the stretch thread in and if you're worried about it melting, use regular thread. I just think you do get a better gather with the um, stretch thread, but it's only slight, it's not going to make a huge difference. And what I'm going to do is get two pieces of fabric. <clears throat> right, this is my fabric that I'm going to ruffle and I do want to point out something here I have all the um, settings all the stitch lengths and everything like that in the file in my Deb Can Absurdia Sanity closed group it's in the files section there so you can go and pick up what stitch size I had and everything like that but now I'm going to actually make a change to it I didn't worry too much about making a change before it didn't matter but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my stitch length to 2.5. Now, in the instructions, it will tell you to have your stitch length on 4 because you're gathering. So it's easy to think that would be right. But do you see how ugly the stitches are joining the um, ruffle to the flat piece of fabric? Do you see that? You can see them clearly. I mean, I'm not using the same color thread, so... I would say that was deliberate, but it just happened to be that color in my machine. So here's one that I did. And I did the stitch length at two and a half and see how the stitch is barely visible. But in actual fact, I got exactly the same amount of ruffle. So it didn't damage the ruffle by making the stitch length two and a half. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you are going to feed in the fabric and do you remember I told you you want to stay into that corner there so I'm going to get the needles into the fabric and starting to ruffle okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the flat piece of fabric onto the ruffle and what you're going to do is make sure your needles are in your fabric so turn your dial lift your foot and you're going to raise the foot and it's going to go into this top mouth area here and before I do it, can I show you that it also has a corner just here. And I'm going to do exactly the same as I'm doing down here. I'm going to hold the fabric into that corner. So putting this fabric in and I'm going to feed it right up to the needles. And you have to be a bit clever here because if you're not careful, it will run away from you and you'll never get to the flat piece of fabric. So I'm just going to turn my hand wheel and secure it into the flat piece. 
So here we go. Okay, and this is always difficult to demo because you can't really see. Remember the bottom one, I'm not putting it on. I want to drop it in, but I need to drop it a bit more so you can see. But I'm holding them both into the corners. Do you see that? And I'm not going super fast because I wouldn't be able to cope with it. And just at the end here, I'm obviously just going to feed it in. <clears throat> so there you go. There's the ruffle. Isn't that nice? And that's using a heavier fabric than my K-Facet. So that really is a nice ruffle. It would have been even nicer with my K-Facet fabric because it's finer. But I still think it's a great ruffle. Don't you? Would you like me to show you that one more time? I think it helps. It saves you rerunning the uh, video. I've only got a ghastly zigzag. Right. Okay, so let's use another piece that's already got some stitching on it. I'm going to put the right side of the ruffles facing up. I'm going to lift the foot and I'm just going to get the needles into the fabric so it's starting to ruffle. Then I'm going to take the piece of fabric I'm sewing it to, make sure my needles are down holding the fabric, going to lift my foot, going to post it in that little mouth area there. Shall I, if I, no, I'll leave you where you are because if I lift it any higher, you can't see the other bit. So right up to the needles, put my foot down, turn my hand wheel just to get into the fabric. Remember, if you don't do that, it keeps running away from you as you stitch and you never catch up with it. And then I'm just going to lift those two fabrics into the corners. And remember, the bottom one, I've really got to leave it light. I've got to let it feed into those feed dogs and get um, gathered up. So there we go again. Okay, just reminding you that was with a stitch length of two and a half. That's different to the instructions normally. Normally when you gather, they tell you to use four and that's quite right. But when you're sewing it to a piece of fabric, you're going to find that it has a nicer finish with the uh, two and a half stitch, two and a half stitch length. Okay, so let me see, did I miss anything on my demo gathering? We, we, we first of all gathered just a straightforward piece of fabric and we were going to pull up the ends. So we used a stitch link four. Um, we then did the puffing, didn't we? And we sewed on both sides and we didn't alter anything on that. And we certainly could have pulled the um, stitching up on the puffing. Here's a small piece of puffing, just to remind you what the puffing was. And then we worked on the heavier fabric and we sewed some cording into it so that we could pull up the fabric and make gathers. And lastly, we sewed a ruffle on. We sewed a ruffle on and we had our stitch length at 2.5. So what was the foot called, the most recent one? This is the ruffler foot. The, the one where we sewed the cord in was the elastic foot. Okay. I do want to add one thing just because in case it missed anybody's attention. But when I did the puffing, I actually used this foot because when you're doing um, gathers, it actually gathers better with this foot on, even if you don't sew anything to it, just feeding it under. It's, it's designed so that it will help to gather the fabric. So on the puffing, I used the ruffler foot. And on, when I put the cording into the stitching, I used the elastic foot. So I think that clarifies that. And I think I've answered some of the questions that have come in. This is all written down in the piece of paper that's going in the group, and I have that here. So let me turn you over to that so that I can show you. Oh, I did want to say that I haven't dealt with... Um, if you have um, the bigger machines, the eight threads, eight thread surges, then you can also gather with cover and 
chain stitch and I, I really love to do that um, let me just show you I did show you at the beginning but perhaps it'll make more sense now this is using actually this is using seven threads or eight threads I did a triple cover stitch with decorative thread in the chain looper and then actually I finished the edges because it stopped the gathers from coming undone so I will cover that in another um, live because it's a, a completely new story how is the ruffler different from the shearing foot good question now this is not the shearing foot but it looks just like this okay the difference is it has a little flange on the back of it and um it the, the gathering foot is super super good and you could have used that in place of the ruffler foot for your gathering i think you would like it it's uh, a nice easy foot it does help to gather you know, my point is, if you're pulling up the gathers, it doesn't matter so much um, which foot you use. But yes, I i mean, the reason the, sh the shearing foot, um, which some people call the gathering foot, it does shearing. This is shearing. And again, this, this is actually done on the serger. And I might make this a project. I might make this a project for next week. That would be fun to do to use the um, shearing foot and actually do some. This is stretchy. You know, it's it's it's. I forget what we used to call it. Kind of like imitation smocking. It's the elastic. But that's a fun sew. And for that, I used the shearing foot. And in fact, everything on here was done with the shearing foot. This this is done with the shearing foot. And the flower's done with the shearing foot. So yes, that was... I, I tried to keep it simple and just keep it on the serger tonight. But certainly we need to investigate all that too. So yes, the smocking. We will look at that. Perhaps that will be next week. Um, I might change it because I've got something going on that I hope to release next week, but we'll see how I go. You know how it goes. So yes, here I have it. Um, for any of you that have never been to my videos before, um, I have a website, debcanamstudio.com. On there, you'll find different things. You'll find free videos to help you thread, um, use wire and all sorts of things. There's all sorts of free videos up there. And you'll also find a um, shop and in the shop I sell all my patterns for all my projects and I have some more detailed classes up there like 101 classes for the serger and um, 101 class for the cover and chain too and also on knits and you they come with a downloadable book or you can buy the book and videos <coughs> sorry it's really it, there's so much pollen around at the moment it's going to rain tomorrow thank goodness anyway so yes, that's my Facebook, my um, website. And there's one more. Th oh, yes, I'll say that here. So the written file is going to be in my Facebook group, which is Deb Canham Serger Sanity Projects. And that's the only place I know to put a file. I can't work out how to put it in my public group. So two more things on that. One, these videos that I do on the public group, which most of you are watching when it's live. It's done on my public page, Deb Canham Studio, Serger Sanity. If you're a store and you want to share these to your customers, please feel totally free to do so, um, or anybody else that wants to. I then put a posting of this into my group, and you can't share outside that group. So the other thing I want to say too is, I've been doing these lives now for several, several months. And they're all different subjects. Sometimes I'll have a little bit of one that I've done before. I think I've done gathering before, but I think I took it differently today. But there's information on knit binders. There's information, there's some really good basic information on how to feed in um, fabrics. There's a little purse. There's how to put um, a zipper in, all those type of things. So, you know, look down the videos and see what there is, because there's lots of information in there. If Richard, you won't go. Richard's trying to chase a squirrel off the bow 